Recently, Amarin announced a ton of new lights, two of which were some tubes that we talked about last week. So if you haven't already, you can check out that review. But today we're talking about this thing, the Amarin F22C, which is one of four different LED mats available. So there's four models. The model names all start with F, which stands for flexible. Then we have a number. 22 and 21. 22 is for a two by two light, more of a square size, and the 21 is a two by one. The letter at the end of the model name tells you if it's by color or RGB. And for pricing, we're looking at $400 for the cheapest light and $900 for the F22C, which is what you see configured here. Amran sent this light in for review, but they are not sponsoring this video. This video is, however, supported by those of you who purchased my camera guides and LUTs. Check the links in the description to learn more, and thank you guys so much for the support. Before we dive into what you can do with these lights and how to use them, let's talk about what comes in the kit and how to get it all set up. First, we have the case that it comes in, and it's kind of a semi-hard mesh kind of case. We'll go ahead and open things up. I'll slide it forward here, and first we'll talk about where the light is positioned. So the light is actually in this uh, like folder area here at the top of the case. I will go ahead and pull it out here. I really like these uh, support arms or uh, you know fabric here, so that when you open up the lid, it doesn't flop all the way backward. Now let's get to what's in the bottom of the case, starting with the controller here. We'll be talking about how it works and what all you can do with this light in a little bit. Next we have the power supply, which has this cool V-mount bracket that we'll take a look at, and a locking XLR style connector, a three meter extension cable for the light head, a foldable frame for the whole light, a straight and angled baby pin adapter for that frame, a 5 8 to 5 8 light stand adapter, and then underneath this grid, I have the actual soft box which can be opened up and attached to the light itself followed by a grid that attaches to the soft box and two different fabric options for the soft box we have a half grid and then this two and a half stop diffusion fabric which is really nice super thick going to give you a nice milky soft light now that we've gone over what comes in the box let's go ahead and talk about all the different ways to mount this light which is one of the ways it's very very unique and the first thing i want to show you is that we have velcro all the way around the back and these grommets sewn into the light. So you could take something like a carabiner, rope, cable, and hang this light pretty much anywhere. There's also holes in the corners with this piece of plastic here and these three screws. So you could use that to hang the light. And if you want even more control when it comes to mounting, you can use the X bracket that comes with the light. So here I have it here in kind of its pack down mode, but you'll notice we have these four pins here that we can pull and then rotate out the actual light here until it clicks in place like that. And with that done, we can take each end of this X bracket and stick it and insert it into a slot on this corner piece here. So now I have the bracket mounted fully onto the light. And the next thing you can do is add a different adapter to this receiver right here that has this locking clamp. So we have two options available, a straight pin and an angled or right angle baby pin adapter. So what you do is you take the knurled end stick it into the post here, rotate it to where you want it, and then lock it down in place. So it's a pretty good system. Uh, and if you need to, and this isn't tight enough, you can loosen it, screw it down even tighter, then tighten it again. And that's pretty rock solid. So you could take this, throw it on a light stand, a C stand, grip head, really anything. And you have those two options, the right angle, as well as the straight adapter to customize how the light is going to be mounted. If you're not going to be using a female receiver, you can also take advantage of the adapter that comes with the light. So I could take this right angle adapter, throw it on there, tighten it down and then grab this guy and add it to the light. And now I can just throw this thing on any old light stand and have complete tilting control when I'm using this just on a basic light stand. From there, you can add the soft box if desired. And this just Velcros on to the outside of the light. Once on, you can then add your diffusion of choice, if any, and the grid if you so desire. Now let's talk about the controller and power options to get this whole thing set up and to be able to control the light itself. And first I wanna spend some time talking about the controller because I think it's really, really well designed. So on the front here, we have a panel, all of our controls, which we'll talk about here in a second. 
On the top, we have our output. Moving to the right side, we have a DMX USB connection as well as a quarter 20 mounting point, a fan. And then on the bottom, we have the DC input. Moving to the opposite side of the light, we have this quick release, which actually works with Aperture's quick release clamp. So I can take this entire thing and snap it onto this whole connector and mount the entire thing to a stand and have a really, really rock solid connection. So that's really cool to see. But unfortunately, this clamp didn't come with a light or at least the kit that I received for this review. So if you wanna use one of these, you may have to purchase it separately. Last but not least, on the back of the light, we have a removable kind of wire hanger. If you just wanted to throw this on a light stand and dangle it from this wire. And then we have a V mount plate. So you can take V mount batteries and power up the entire controller and the light. And we'll talk about power options and limitations here in a second, but let's go ahead and hook this up to a power supply. And what's really slick is on the back of this AC adapter, we have this metal clamp system with a V-mount connector. So I can just take this whole thing, slide it on just like that. We're gonna take our XLR connector here, and I'm gonna plug it into the bottom of the light just like so. At this point, I'm going to grab the cable from the light itself and connect it to the top of the controller. This cable has a locking connection with a quick release, which is really slick. And you could, of course, go straight from the light to the controller or use the included extension cable for a really, really long run, which we'll talk about why you might wanna do that a little bit later. So we're gonna take this connector here. I am going to throw it on the light. You'll hear a click when I click this in, just like that. Now, before we power everything up, we need to take our AC cable and I'm going to plug it into the power supply, which is mounted to the back, so right here. And now we'll flip things around and we'll go ahead and power up the light. And now we can start talking about what we can do with this connector. Controller. So this layout might look very familiar to you because it's very similar to a lot of Aperture's Pro lights. But this is an Amaran light, not an Aperture one. But still, we have the similar power button to turn things on and off. Our three dials, the intensity, saturation, hue, or CCT. We have four preset buttons, a light mode button, and a menu button. So first, let's talk about the light modes. I'm going to press that button once, and you can see we are in the CCT mode. We can use the intensity knob to change our mode. And let's start by talking about CCT. Here, we can change our intensity with this knob. We can change our color temperature with this knob, and we can go up to 7,500 Kelvin and down to 2,500 Kelvin. Next, we have a green and magenta shift. Because this is an RGB light, we can take advantage of those colored LEDs and actually add either some green or in the negative, we can add magenta. This means you can perfectly match this light to any other light source. You also notice that we have our power indicator here. It tells me that we're plugged in with AC and we have over two hours of runtime. Next, let's hit the light mode and we'll go over to HSI. Here we have the typical hue, saturation, and our intensity. Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to controlling the light is each of these knobs can be pressed in for quick changes in increments of around 20%. So for intensity, I can press the button, there's 20%. 40, 60, 80, 100. Same for our saturation. In this case, since we're in HSI mode, we can run through those. And for the hue, I can do the exact same thing and quickly change colors using the buttons just by pressing them in. Next, we're gonna go into the light mode again, and we have our FX. There are a ton of effects built into this light. We have our custom FX. We have the gel mode, which allows you to essentially choose your color temperature. It's like a CCT mode, but you can also add these gels. So if you're coming from a traditional kind of, you know, gaffer DP scenario where you're very comfortable with that setup, you can use those. Then we're back to CCT. So that is the light modes. We also have presets here. So to use these, you simply press and hold one of the buttons and you'll be given a little notification. Do you want to replace preset four? I'll hit yes. Earlier, I set up a preset with a color chase. So I can simply press number one here and the light will start going through a color chase, which I normally wouldn't use, but it's fun for a video like this. So those are the preset buttons. Finally, we have the menu system. And here we have DMX frequency selection dimming curves. You can go in here and choose what kind of curve you want. I usually recommend sticking with linear. Bluetooth reset, which allows you to connect this light to the Citus Link app, which is incredible. I've already talked about that in several videos. 
super powerful stuff. Then we have the serial number studio mode, which is really cool. And what this will do is when you select it and you turn it on, if I turn off power to this light, the light will turn off. If I return power to the light or turn on a power strip or something, the light will automatically turn on and have the same settings where it left off. Next, we have our language, firmware update, factory reset, and exit. So that covers all of the controls of the light. Before we go into a couple different lighting setups, I wanna talk about power options in detail because there's some things you need to keep in mind. If you're using 14.8 volt, you know, standard V-mount batteries, you lose about half the output of the light. But if you're using one of the newer 26 to 28 volt V-mount batteries, you will have full output on the light. So that's something to keep in mind. If you just got standard batteries, you're losing output. But if you plug it in with the included accessories and run it off of AC power, you're gonna have no issues and have full output. With all that out of the way, let's go over a couple different setups using this light. The first is one that I've used a lot already in several of my videos, and that's to have it boomed over a table and film B-roll of a product. For this setup, I use the full softbox with a grid and that 2.5 stop diffusion. In RGB mode, you can get some really, really nice product shots with a setup like this. And I just simply use the right angle connector on the back of the X frame to mount everything up. This next setup involved using just the light on a stand and using it as a key light, which is fine for really, really tight shots. But in general, this isn't a large enough source for me personally. So let's bump it up a notch and let's back the light up at a 4x4 diffusion frame with some magic cloth. And this looks a lot nicer as a key light source. Much larger much softer and super easy to rig up with a light like this. And for this last setup, I'm going to use the light as a background light. So currently it is just out of frame over there and it's about eight feet from the center of my background. So I'm going to go ahead and take my lights, turn off everything behind me. So all we have is the key light and I'm gonna start turning up the intensity. This is a good time to talk about how smooth the intensity is. So instead of steps where it just quickly jumps up, it is very smooth. Let's go all the way up to 100%. That's what it looks like when we're at full blue. Another thing I'll point out is you can simply press in on the hue button and it's going to jump to a lot of the kind of primary and secondary colors. There we have yellow. Now we've got green, 180, there's cyan, 240 blue, 300 magenta or kind of purple, and then 360 gives us red. So that's full output right now. Intensity on the background, saturation is 100%. Now let's switch over to CCT mode and let's go to 100% and I'll press in the buttons here to quickly jump to 5600 Kelvin. So there's daylight, which is not quite what my key light is, but that gives you an idea when it comes to output. If we run through the CCT uh, color temperatures, you'll notice that brightness really doesn't change. So it's a very consistent output across the CCT range. And that's going to bring us to the output specs on this light. Honestly, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about it because it's fantastic. The color temperature modes on this are very accurate. Output is amazing for this style of fixture. I compared it to all my other light mats and it was much brighter than my IntelliTech, Falcon Eyes, and other brands and extended CRI is also very good. So honestly, when it comes to color metrics, things are just really good on this light. And that's going to bring us to the pros and cons. So we've already talked about how solid this light is when it comes to control. You have a lot of options. You have great build quality, a lot of metal stuff, but there are a couple things I'm not wild about. And the first may be something you've heard throughout this video, and that is the fan noise in this controller. And I believe it's the power supply, but I could be wrong. So what I'm going to do is turn off the controller and I'm gonna stop talking and then I'll turn it on. Now keep in mind, right above me, there is a microphone pointed straight down. Here's what it sounds like when I turn it on. And as you can hear, there's definitely fan noise there. Now, you can move this to a different area. We have this long extension cable, so you could put this in another room, and hopefully these cables will be able to be purchased and daisy chained even further so that you could keep the controller in a completely different space. All of that said, there's really nothing else I dislike about this light. Now, I'm talking about the F22C. The other models I have not used, but I will say if you're going to be buying a light like this, I'd recommend just going with the 22C, the full color version, the largest one you can get. Because once you get to those smaller sizes, it, to me at least, makes a lot of sense to just go with the Amaran 60C, as that light is incredibly bright, 
really affordable and super powerful. Whereas if you're going to get an LED mat like this, I think the most usable size is this two by two form factor. Honestly, that wraps up the review of this light. I have very little bad to say about this. I've always loved LED light mats. You know, if you've been watching this channel, I've reviewed several of them. And this is essentially kind of the most perfect version that I've used and seen so far. It's super bright. It's really well made. And the only downside is kind of that fan noise, which can be mitigated by running an extension cable and mounting it not right next to a microphone. So if you'd like to learn more about this light, check out the information in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to help you out in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.